The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. One of the great mysteries of life is death. What happens when you die? Do you go to heaven or hell? Or are you gone forever as if you never existed? What happened to the thousands who were instantly incinerated when atomic bombs exploded over Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in 1945? And what about the six million Jews who died in the Holocaust and millions of others who died in World War II? Even today, the Genocide Watch Organization has issued emergency alerts for Nigeria, Myanmar, Central African Republic, Somalia, and Iraq. Is there hope for millions of little children who died at a young age? And is there any hope for members of your own family who are not religious? Are they burning in hell right now? My friends, many of the common teachings about life after death do not agree with your Bible. What is the truth? On today's program, we'll be offering you an inspiring free audio CD that explains from your own Bible the mystery of life after death. What does your Bible say about life after death? This free audio CD titled, Is There Life After Death? will give you the encouraging answers. Be sure to order your free copy. Most people take life for granted until a loved one dies or comes close to death. There are many ideas about life after death. The afterlife is a mystery to most people, but your Bible reveals the truth about this great mystery of life. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The Apostle Paul was discussing the resurrection from the dead. He explained this great mystery, which has been hidden from the vast majority of human beings. You need to understand the mystery of life after death. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. One of life's greatest mysteries is the question, what happens when we die? Is there life after death? Or will the good people go to heaven and the bad people to a burning hell? We mourn over the death of a loved one due to accident, disease, or violence. We read about a promising young high school student or university student killed in an auto accident caused by a drunk driver. Even a young child has been killed in his own home by a random drive-by shooting. Thousands of young men and women have lost their lives in military service, many before age 30 and some even before age 20. We mourn over their graves and wonder about their future. Why have so many had to die at such a young age? Is there any hope for the billions who never converted to any form of Christianity? How do you explain the mystery of life and death? On today's program, we'll answer these questions, and we'll be offering you a free audio compact disc titled, Is There Life After Death? This audio CD contains three Tomorrow's World programs. This CD will give you and your family encouragement and hope from the Scriptures. Be sure to write down the address and phone number to order your free copy. You can also order this free CD on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Many scientists, atheists, and agnostics believe that life ends at death. On the other hand, many religious people believe that when the body dies, the soul goes straight to heaven or to hell. Some expect to wait in purgatory. Still others look to the resurrection as their only hope. Think of all the billions of people who have ever lived. Was there a purpose for them? Will they have a future hope? We mourn and grieve for our deceased family and loved ones. My friends, there is hope for those who are now in the grave. But where can we go for the answers? Your Bible gives us the truth. We encourage you to read from your own Bible. Don't take for granted what we or any ministers tell you. Be sure to mark down these references and read them for yourself. Your Bible explains the mystery 
about death, the resurrection, and the afterlife. The Apostle Paul wrote of a mystery concerning life after death. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. This is called the resurrection chapter. The Apostle Paul describes death as a sleep. Jesus himself referred to death as sleep, as we'll see later. Here Paul is describing the resurrection that will take place at the second coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Let's read that in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The Apostle Paul explained that the resurrection of faithful Christians will take place when? At the last trumpet. Regular viewers of Tomorrow's World understand that the last trumpet refers to the seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, verse 15. Six of the seven trumpet events are described in Revelation chapters 8 and 9. I encourage you to read about these dramatic events that constitute the one-year day of the Lord leading up to Christ's return to this earth. The good news is announced in Revelation 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. All faithful Christians pray daily, as Jesus instructed us in the model prayer, Your kingdom come. That's in Matthew 6, verse 10. We look forward to that time when Christ will return to this earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. The Prince of Peace, as He's called in Isaiah 9, verse 6, will teach all nations the way of life and peace among all peoples. The resurrection from the dead for faithful Christians takes place at the last trumpet. But what happens to those who never converted to Christianity? My friends, your Bible reveals that there is a future hope and resurrection for all those who never had a genuine opportunity to be converted. The Bible describes three general resurrections. You need to study this for yourself. To help you in your study, I'd like to offer you this inspiring free audio CD titled, Is There Life After Death? This free audio compact disc contains three Tomorrow's World programs. Is There Life After Death? The Three Resurrections? And Are They All Lost Forever? There are so many misconceptions about heaven, hell, and the resurrection, you need to study what the Bible plainly teaches. Are billions of people who never heard the name of our Savior lost forever? This free audio CD will give you the answer. You need this vital information. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio CD, Is There Life After Death? Just ask for the audio CD on Life After Death. You can also order this free audio CD on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-493-5437. That number again is 1-800-493-5437. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. My friends, your Bible reveals the great mysteries of life and death. What will happen to you when you die? There are two chapters in your Bible that clearly explain our real hope and our future after death. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. The Apostle Paul wants us to know the truth about the resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. 
But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Listen, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. This is a very important passage. First of all, notice that the Apostle Paul refers to death as a sleep. He does not describe dead Christians as being active or alive in heaven. They are asleep or dead until the coming of Christ, His second coming. Now let's read verse 16. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Notice, this is very important. The dead in Christ will rise first. Please understand, the dead in Christ are not alive in heaven. They are dead in the grave, waiting the first resurrection. They are at peace, feeling no pain or consciousness. True Christians who have died are not resurrected until Christ returns. But what happens to those faithful Christians who are alive at the second coming? Continue reading in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Those of us who are alive when Christ returns, as it tells us in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, will join those who have been dead all these centuries and millennia now resurrected to receive the promised gift of eternal life. That is what all genuine Christians look forward to. Your Bible reveals that the resurrection is the hope of the Christian. The Apostle Peter emphasized that hope in 1 Peter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. At one time, the Apostle Paul was being judged and examined by the Jerusalem Sanhedrin. Paul made the resurrection the major issue. He spoke to the assembly of both Pharisees and Sadducees. You can read about this confrontation in Acts the 23rd chapter. Acts 23 and verse 6. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. Was Paul saying that he would go to heaven when he died? Absolutely not. Paul was looking forward to the resurrection from the dead at the return of Christ. Read it in your own Bible. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul spoke of his faith in Christ and his future goal of the resurrection. Philippians 3 and verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. My friends, the Bible teaches that when one dies, he or she remains dead until the resurrection. The Apostle Paul refers to deceased Christians as those who sleep in Jesus. Sleep is used here as a metaphor for death. Jesus Himself spoke of death as sleep. My friends, have you really studied your Bible and focused on the resurrection? If you're a professing Christian, you may have just casually assumed that when someone dies, he or she goes to heaven or hell. You may not have even studied or read in your Bible about the resurrection. What did the Messiah, your Savior, Jesus Christ Himself emphasize? We'll answer that question in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you this inspiring audio CD titled, Is There Life After Death? This free audio compact disc contains three Tomorrow's World programs. Is There Life After Death? The Three Resurrections? And Are They All Lost Forever? Be sure to request your free copy. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. Many professing Christians assume that when a person dies, he or she goes immediately to heaven, hell, or purgatory. 
Is that what Jesus Himself taught? Remember the miraculous revival of Jesus' friend Lazarus? When Lazarus died, did he go to heaven? Lazarus had been in the tomb four days, and Jesus brought him back to life. Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead to live out his natural physical life. As Jesus proclaimed in John 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lazarus was dead. Did Lazarus go to the glories of heaven, and then was he forced to come back in a physical body when Jesus resurrected him? Of course not. Lazarus did not go to heaven or to a burning hellfire when he died. Lazarus simply died and had no consciousness. Jesus said, Lazarus sleeps, Lazarus is dead. Read that in verse 11 and verse 14. Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead to live out his natural physical life. Lazarus had been in the tomb four days, and Jesus brought him back to life, physical life. But the resurrection of deceased Christians is to eternal, immortal life. And that takes place at the return of Christ, as we saw in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. And the dead in Christ will rise first. The resurrection is the hope of a Christian. If one already went to heaven at death, there would be no need for a resurrection. One is not born with immortality or eternal life. Believe it or not, the Bible teaches that a soul can die. The soul is not immortal. Let's briefly review that. That will be shocking to many. Turn in your Bible to Ezekiel 18 and verse 4. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. The soul who sins shall die. The Hebrew word for soul is nephesh, which means physical or natural life. Souls can die. No human has an immortal soul. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53, we learn that at the resurrection, this mortal must put on immortality. My friends, you and I are mortal, but faithful Christians will receive the gift of immortality. When? At the resurrection. This is the first general resurrection explained in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. The resurrection to immortality. We've seen from the Bible the inspiring hope of a faithful Christian. That hope is the first resurrection. Now, if there is a first resurrection, there must be a second resurrection. What will happen to all those billions of people who will not be in the first resurrection? Consider the history of the world. In the past 6,000 years, billions of people from countries all over the world have lived and died. The vast majority have never even heard the name of Christ. The Apostle Peter plainly stated in Acts 4, verse 12, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So what will happen to the billions of people who never heard His name? If you have your Bible, turn to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Here we find a reference to the first resurrection. Notice those in the second general resurrection are resurrected 1,000 years after the first resurrection. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The first resurrection, as it's called, is for the saints, faithful Christians. But if there's a first resurrection, there's also a second resurrection. This is the great general resurrection to judgment. But notice what it tells us in Revelation 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Jesus spoke about this resurrection in John, the fifth chapter, John 5, verse 28. Jesus said, Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear His voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation or judgment, as other translations have it. That is when billions of so-called unsaved people will face judgment, as it states in Hebrews 9, verse 27. It is appointed for men to die once, 
But after this, the judgment. But what kind of a judgment will it be? We'll answer that question in the conclusion of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you this inspiring audio CD titled, Is There Life After Death? This free audio compact disc contains three Tomorrow's World programs. Is There Life After Death? The Three Resurrections? And Are They All Lost Forever? You need to know the answers to these questions. My friends, we all have lost loved ones and we mourn. Thank God that the truth of the Bible gives us comfort. As the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. My friends, you need to study what the Bible plainly teaches. Are billions who never heard the name of our Savior lost forever? Is God that unfair? This free audio CD will give you the answer. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free audio CD titled, Is There Life After Death? This audio CD will give you the biblical references and you'll be able to study on your own time and at your own convenience. Just pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy, Is There Life After Death? Just ask for the audio CD on Life After Death. You can also order this free CD on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. You can also find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-493-5437. That number again is 1-800-493-5437. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Is there any hope for the billions of people who never converted to Christianity? Yes, there is hope in the second general resurrection called the White Throne Judgment. Read that in your own Bible. Revelation, the 20th chapter, Revelation 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. This is the second general resurrection. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The Greek word for books is Biblia. The good news is that the books or the Bible are open to the understanding of the masses of people for the first time. Remember the valley of dry bones described by the prophet Ezekiel? The resurrection described in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel describes what takes place at the second resurrection. Billions of people will be resurrected to physical life in the White Throne Judgment. The Book of Life is finally open to all of them. This will be their first opportunity to really learn the truth. This is not a second chance, as some would like to call it. All people will be held accountable for their actions and thoughts. But this will be the first time for many to see their sins, to repent of their sins, and to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Others in the resurrection will include those who are victims of accidents, oppression, and genocide. They will be healed and given a chance for a peaceful and prosperous life and a genuine opportunity for eternal life in glory. My friends, it's God's purpose to give everyone who has ever lived a genuine, fair opportunity to be a part of His divine family for all eternity. He's made that purpose plain in 2 Peter, the third chapter. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. My friends, let's understand. There are three general resurrections. 
These are explained in the free audio CD we're offering today, Is There Life After Death? The first general resurrection from the dead is to immortal life. The second general resurrection from the dead is to physical life. This second resurrection is a resurrection to judgment. That's when billions of so-called unsaved humans will face judgment. As it states in Hebrews 9, verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Sadly, some will reject God's grace and salvation. They will refuse to repent of their sins and refuse to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God will destroy the incorrigibly wicked in the lake of fire. The third general resurrection is to eternal punishment and destruction in the lake of fire. The third resurrection is punishment and eternal death in the lake of fire. God is just. He states in Hebrews 10, verse 30, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The wicked will be tormented as they stand before the lake of fire. Then all the wicked will be cast into the lake of fire and burned up, as it tells us in Revelation 21, verse 8. They will live no longer. This is the second death from which there is no resurrection. As it tells us in Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, eternal death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. On today's program, we've seen that God reveals to faithful Christians the mystery of life beyond death. My friends, we all need to prepare for the return of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We need to look forward to the resurrection at Christ's return. God has an awesome plan for all humanity. There is hope for the dead, for genocide victims, and for the spiritually blinded billions. That hope is in the first and second general resurrections and the opportunity for glorious life forever in the kingdom of God. My friends, we need to pray as Jesus taught us, Your kingdom come. Be sure to request your free audio CD, Is There a Life After Death? The three programs on the CD cover much more vital information than we've had time for on this program. They explain the mystery of life after death. Be sure to request your free copy. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end time prophecies and their meaning. We invite you to join our colleagues, Wallace Smith and Rod King, who will also share with you the awesome truths of the Bible, the deeper meaning of life, and the prophecies of tomorrow's world. Be sure to join us again next week right here at the same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. And remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.